Hi guys, hope you're having a great day so far. You know, I think we'd all agree that children are pretty intuitive creatures. You know, they sense when things are good, when they're bad, when they're happy, and when they're sad. And they also sense panic, anxiety, fear, distress, all of the things that we are actually facing right now. You know, they feel what we feel. And even if we haven't sat down with them for an explanation and a conversation about um, the details of COVID-19, um, they would have already noticed a difference in our tone of voice, our mannerisms, our facial expressions, how and what we're saying during our phone calls to our family members and our friends. Um, in addition to this, um, if they've had any exposure to, to the media, possibly to the news, or anything else on TV. Um, there's been lots of news breaks that keep popping up on the television. Maybe they've had some exposure by the media also. So the question is, you know, during this time, how can we actually keep them calm? Well, lucky for us, we're joined by our very special guest today, Anita Van Ruyen, who's, who's going to be, be able to tell us how. Now, Anita's going to be sharing her top 10 tips um, how we can keep the kids calm amongst the chaos. Now, a little bit of an introduction. Um, Anita is a Melbourne-based human behaviour expert, confidence coach, and creator of the Corona Mindset Courses. And I want to hear about these too. Um, she's helped thousands of people from CEOs to students manage a range of issues from ranting, self-talk, uh, procrastination, self-judgment, and loads more. Um, and she's done from one-on-one -on -one to group coaching sessions um, with all of her online programs. And we're really, really grateful for your time today. How are you doing? I'm fabulous. How are you? I'm so, so, so grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, we, as I said, we're really grateful for your time. Now, lots to talk about. Now, first of all, we published your article titled 10 Tips to Calm the, the COVID Farm. For someone who hasn't read the article, could you give us a little bit of an overview and just what inspired you to write it? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, I wrote this article because there is so much stuff going on with everybody at the moment. Kids at home, kids par parents panicking, kids panicking. And I wanted to set out some really simple and really easy to implement things that you can help your kids with at this time. So the 10 tips that I've got is, the first one is about finding your focus because what you focus on is what you get to the exclusion of everything else. So if you are focusing on fear and panic and everything like that, guess what you're gonna be noticing? It's all of those things. So I have encouraged everybody, everybody, oh, sorry. No, just say where attention goes, energy flows. So it's, it's about where your focus is. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, I've encouraged people to, turn the news off like if you want to watch it watch it one one like once a day rather than all the time because if your focus is in that space of panic and anxiety and stress then that's where everything goes including the stuff that your kids pick up so super important one there um, the second one is around creating certainty for yourself and for the for the kids yep this this is so vital and you know like at the moment we've got toilet paper gate we've got people hoarding food and all kinds of things and the reason that people are doing that is because there is so much uncertainty you know things are changing like every five seconds it's this it's that no we can't do this now we can't do that schools are open schools are closed hairdressers who knows yeah so there's so much uncertainty going on that people are craving certainty and the reason for that is because as humans we need to have certainty as a base we need to know that when we flick a light switch the light comes on and when we uh, turn on the tap water comes through and if we go to the toilet that there's toilet paper there and those are things that we have taken as things that are certain for us for such a long time and now everything is feels uncertain so the reason that people are going into, you know, hoarding world is that that helps them to feel some kind of certainty. Control. Now, children, control. sorry? And control. Yes, control, which we actually don't have any of. But certainty is something that kids particularly need. They need to know that your love is there all the time, all the time, all the time. So because there's a lot of uncertainty in in all kinds of areas, helping them to 
feel certain and create certainty around even just the simplest things like the sun is going to rise, the sun is going to set, seasons change, you know, the, um, the leaves on the trees are changing. This is for certain. This is absolutely certain. And kids, humans crave to know that they have some certainty around anything really. The next one we've got is, I've, I've put in, is uh, creating structure and rituals. Now, that sort of may sound a little bit weird. Structure is a really important thing, especially now when things, again, are so uncertain. And, you know, schools are now on holidays for a lot of states. And, you know, school uh, creates a lot of structure. Going to work creates a lot of structure. And for most families, both of those things aren't there anymore. So creating some uh, or maintaining some structure around bedtimes, meal times, the time that you wake up, the things that you do regularly and consistently with the family are going to be increasingly important because there's no structure. So yep. remember, you know, like when, I remember when I was on school holidays, when I was a kid, and that was the time that you'd end up going to bed at like ridiculous o'clock and then you'd wake up at sort of, you know, lunchtime and everything just went out the window and it causes a lot of problems, especially at this time because there's sort of, there is no certainty around things. So creating some structure for your family is going to be really important right now. Now, the rituals thing that I mentioned is not anything weird. It's about creating some habits that are really awesome and beautiful for your family. So for some families, that might be, um, you know, all having dinner together and checking in, you know, what was your good news for the day? It's something that my family has done for years and years and years. We have, you know, GN, we call it good news. And that's part of our family ritual now is that we always come together. And again, you know, remembering that focus, what are some positive things that you can, um, that you can find and you can create every single day. Yep. So that becomes yeah. a bit of a, can become a family ritual. Awesome. The next awesome. one. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's like the, the good news for us as a family has become something that, we all really look forward to every time we catch up. You know, we write, like literally we'll write a list on a sticky note to go, oh my God, there's all of this good news, good news, good news that we've found. Even amongst all of the stuff that's going on, um, we can always find something good. So yeah. um, the next one is to create a gratitude jar or wall. And this is something that can be part of the ritual is to, Find a space in your house, might be on the fridge, it could be a wall. I've used, certainly in my own life, have used the back of the toilet door even. Um, it's terrific to use sticky notes. Like you come into my bathroom now even and there are sticky notes all over my bathroom. It sort of is a bit weird. People come in and, you know, they'll go to my bathroom and they will come out like ages later and they're like, oh, my God, Anita, I was just reading all of these beautiful quotes and... Um, and messages that you've got stuck on your wall and creating a, a space in your house, a dedicated space where you, you and the kids can write a message. Sticky notes are great, especially the ones that you've stolen from work. Uh, um, you know, to write a note on there of something that you're grateful for um, or you can either use like a little block of um, note paper and write in something that you're grateful for, fold it up in the jar, and at the end of the week, then create a ritual to open them up and read them all. And it's really an important and powerful thing, especially right now in this time of fear. Love it. Yeah, it's a, that's one of my favourite ones, actually. Um, now, the fifth tip I've got here is about minding your language. And... As you said in the intro, like the words that we speak are are only a really small portion of the meaning that our kids take from things and for humans take from things. So being a bit careful about your tone and your body language, because kids, they are intuitive. They pick up, 
they pick up the feeling even if the words are the right words they pick up the feeling and they pick up the intention so before you need to speak if you are in a space of fear create a second and just and create a focus on love and gratitude and even if that is love and gratitude for the people that are here in your home for your kids for your family taking a second and that's all it takes to create that intention of love and gratitude it is most definitely the biggest antidote to fear that is on the planet and there's not enough of it so creating that intention of love and gratitude before you even speak means that your body can start to relax a bit your tone can relax everything that makes up the whole meaning of language that kids take then becomes full of love and that's what we want to convey across to our kids and to anybody in our family to anybody that we love that fear is not taking over this family love is taking over this family so creating that intention having some awareness yourself and creating that focus on love and gratitude before you even like open your mouth taking that second it's so vital to Take a second, breathe into your heart and then speak because we don't have to be living in this fear, fear, fear based world. So that's tip number five. Oh my God, and we've still got five to go. I can't believe all of these things are so cool. Tip number, tip number six is remembering to have fun. There's not enough of it. And especially now when all of us are in a bit of a bubble of fear and a bit of a bubble of uncertainty, doing some things where you can laugh and be silly and just a little bit crazy, yeah? Um, family karaoke, sing-alongs, have a dress-up party for dinner. There's no reason that you can't do that. Bring the fam some other family into it while you're doing FaceTime. Um, as I was having a video chat with my mum and my sister last night, I may have pulled out the toilet paper goggles so that we could have a bit of fun as well at the same time. And it, it makes a difference to be able to do some things that are just a bit silly, just a bit fun and lighten the mood because the mood everywhere is kind of heavy everybody's conversations are COVID this, COVID that, Corona this, Corona that. And so remembering to have fun. Fun brings gratitude. It brings love together with it. Beautiful. So that's tip number six. Uh, tip number seven is about the choice that we have as families, as communities, as individuals even, about how this time in our history, this unprecedented time in our history, can either bring people, families, communities together, or it can do the opposite and it can tear us apart. Now, because we are all physically separated and physically distanced, uh, it's really easy for us to forget that we are part of a community. And I know there are a lot of Facebook groups out there. There's one that I've just joined recently called, I think, the um, Happiness Pandemic, um, which is all about spreading joy spreading love spreading amazing things that the community is coming together to do so looking at what we can do to build those connections that we have to um to strengthen connections that we have with members of the community with members of our family bringing us together rather than tearing us apart so you know simple things like Checking in if your neighbour needs something, has got some, you know, um, maybe there's an elderly neighbour or somebody who is doing it kind of hard. I have a, a girlfriend who, uh, you know, is now working from home and she's really, really struggling with that. So, you know, we've built in now a mini ritual that every day at five o'clock we give each other a call. One of us calls each other, even just, even if it's just for a five minute chat, just to check in that everything is okay. And that's that building those friendships, building the community, yeah. Um, tip number eight, oh my God, I love this one too, is about growing something. Now I know Bunnings are already having some struggle with 
um, you know, people are out there and they've bought heaps and heaps of seedlings and seeds and all that kind of thing. But there is a lot of ways that we can grow things. And it's, it's a really important one because it helps to remind us that there is still tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, that when we plant something today, that there's still tomorrow and there's the future and we've got something to look forward to because, you know, it's not this instant gratification of bam and it's just all there. Vegetables take time to grow. Plants take time to grow. And it reminds us that we actually have that time. So even if it's just, you know, the, the top bits of carrot tops, like what we used to do in, you know, when we were kids putting it on some, um, some cotton wool on the, in a saucer on the window ledge or um, an avocado seed so that we can just, so that that can grow or, you know, lots and lots and lots of people, um, it's very easy to go around and just take a little cutting of some succulents and they're always really good ones to grow as well. So growing something is a fun activity also for the kids. Um, and for me, I've got a whole balcony full of beautiful succulents that have all come from cuttings that I've been able to get from people in my local neighbourhood. And it's, again, that's building that community. So that's tip number eight. Tip number nine is about finding the silver lining. Because wouldn't you agree that we can either look at things from a, a negative side or from a positive side? And when we look at things at how we can reframe it to look at things from, okay, what is the higher purpose here? Or what is the benefit in all of these different things? When we look at things from that perspective, it's like there is a proven therapeutic benefit to finding the silver lining in things. Now, uh, let's not go to the point where we, where we get to the point of toxic positivity, because that's a thing too. We need to keep it real, but we also need to be able to look at what, what is something that's really good that's coming from this. And, you know, things like bringing community, to, community together, things like helping us to be more innovative and find different ways of doing things, things like um, having more time with the kids, being able to help them cook learn how to do some cooking together, learn how to do some things that we've never, ever done before. So that's a really cool one. And the last one, number 10, is about technology. We all have technology, but how can we use it to support us? Now, Netflix is there, of course, um, but that's a really, it's a really vacuum. It's a huge vacuum, I guess, that we can all fall into. We now have some time that we can use technology to help benefit us, um, bring us together. There's a lot of amazing TED Talks. There's a lot of amazing activities and things online that we can use to really build us up as humans and build up our capacity to be able to manage things and do things in different ways. So using technology rather than having technology use us like it often is, I think is a really important thing. And, you know, using it, uh, yeah, I said I had the video chat with my mum and my sister just last night. That was a beautiful thing that I didn't even realise that I needed to help soothe my soul in this time, which is kind of stressful and it's, the stress can very easily catch up to us without us even knowing and then had this chat last night using Facebook Live. Mum's 76 and you know she's cool and loves loves the Facebook Live, um, the Facebook video chat and got off that chat and just went, didn't realise how much I needed that conversation. So using technology in a way that supports us, that is useful to us rather than leading us down a hole into kind of empty calorie um empty calorie watching i suppose mm -hmm. yeah so that's my top 10 i love it and um, i really do see that this, this 
yeah so using using technology at this point um, i think is a great opportunity and it's it's a lot more than just once in a lifetime opportunity to be home just for a little bit of time this is really a once in a generation opportunity that, that we really have to, to be able to be home and to use technology for online courses and online learning and all of these wonderful things that are available to us um, so but thank you for those top 10 tips and we'll definitely have the link in the introduction paragraph also because some other questions for you as well would love to pick your brain um, another question is why is creating certainty so important right now well it's because we have so much uncertainty and with that uncertainty there like our the way that humans work is we need to have certainty before we can start managing uncertainty so with so much uncertainty floating around up here it means that we need to structure and have even more solidly certainty around us which is again you know why we have toilet paper gate because people want certainty that they will be able to pull a few sheets when they go to the toilet um so the certainty factor is something that if parents really focus on that with their kids because their kids feel in like if parents are feeling it the kids are feeling it um, you know, schools finished early out of, you know, at a weird time. Um, so how do we create that certainty? And it's simple things, reminding your kids how much you love them, how much they are loved, how much they are appreciated. Um, you know, that the sun will rise and it will go down every day. The seasons are changing. Anything you can do to create that certainty is a vital thing right now. And I think at the moment too, our lifestyles are slowing down a little bit because we are instead of rushing around everywhere, all of a sudden we've been a little more um, stationary, um, which obviously means we've got a little bit more time to be able to, to think. So I'd love to ask, this is the next question, how can some of us that have gone from such a busy, hectic lifestyle all of a sudden stay, start creating a focus around well-being? That is such a great question because I think that is one of the challenges for all of us. We've, our lives have started to get really fast and you know you, you don't necessarily notice. I think we've all been at our desks crazily trying to get to a deadline and we're getting more and more and more and more and more stressed. Our shoulders are going up and, and then yeah. it's only when the stress is over that you go, oh my God, I, didn't, I just didn't realise. And I think it's the same with this as well that we've been you know our lives are just so busy and fluffy and so much stuff that it's very easy to not notice how stressed we are and therefore that slow down becomes a bit of a challenge but it's always something that we can do because we've been there before um and the simple tips are like we don't have to rush anywhere right now yeah there's nowhere that we can rush to so allowing the time that things take is a perfectly wonderful and amazing thing that we no longer have to be rushing from here to rushing there. We can take our time. We can remember to breathe. I think as humans, we've forgotten how to breathe. You know, that we breathe so shallow that remembering that we can actually breathe all the way in and all the way out is a really important thing to help us just calm the farm yeah calm some of the farm going on in our head calm the farm with the kids and help just slow things down a little bit because it's okay that we do that yeah i love it and look next question now what difference does fun um sort of have like during during this stressful time with COVID 19. it is the mo one of the most powerful things i think we can do especially for our kids is to remember to have fun because it's very easy to get caught up in the drama, in the fear, in the I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, um, and forget that the most simple things. You think back to when we were kids, and the most simple things were always the things that were super fun. They are the memories that we have, they're the memories that we keep of those fun times. I remember being, you know, down on ho on holidays in Sorrento with my sister. That was our annual holiday. That was it. You know, a weekend in Sorrento, um, being arm in arm with my sister, singing at the top of our lungs in dress up clothes. And it's those simple, fun things that in this time where, you know, we've got to go to this class and that class and this class and sporting things, blah, 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 
all these different activities that we have that it's really easy to forget to have fun and simple, simple things. And I think, you know, we have this beautiful opportunity now to get back to simple. Yeah. It's like that had, you know, let's get back to simpleness um, and do fun things because they are what kids are going to remember about their life. And it might be also this is about defining what is fun and what is our what what, what do we want to do with kids? Because like you said, we have been so busy. And these are things that maybe we've always wanted to do and dreamt of doing. What we really have right now is really this Alexa of life. This is time. The thing that the one thing that we are constantly chasing um, that we're wanting more time. We're working harder because we want to reduce the amount of time that we have um, paying our mortgage. Um, we're working harder because we want to be able to have a say for a great holiday. Now, what what are these things all working to? exactly what we have right at the moment and this is just moments to be still and in in, yeah. in, in, in the um the safety of our own home with the people that we love so if in, even if you're not around them like with your your, your mum and your sister you still got the, the technology to be able to reach them but we have time and this is something i think everyone really needs to be able to take uh, stock and hold of at the moment well just really appreciate what we have um, and like you said, you know, we can sit here and hypothesize why this is happening and all that stuff. It doesn't matter what, what, what those reasons are, just deal with the facts. And we've got this beautiful opportunity at the moment. Um, and, and it's, and it's a time that we've never had before where we have the time to have the time to spend to, it's a luxury that it, when do we ever get this? And this has now been imposed upon us. and we can take it and make it something really amazing or we can take it and make it something stressful. So I know which, which way I'm going with it. I want to make it something amazing. Yep. A hundred percent. And look, like I was just saying, it might just be that families and parents are, are discovering new things to do because you've got the time just because you haven't maybe grown something with the kids before or run certain art projects or whatever it is. This is a great opportunity with everything we've got available to us with, with the internet um, now to be able to, to do a whole heap of stuff. So just appreciate it for what it is. Um, but a great opportunity yeah. to, to redefine our own personal values and beliefs and likes and, and all that sort of stuff as well and to learn and, and to come out the other end of it um you know so much better now next question I've got and, and i'm oh, sorry and I, I think it's also really important that kids are allowed to find some fun for themselves we've been really really like prescribed fun mm. for them and kids need to learn how to be able to have some fun and make some fun things for themselves and i think that this makes it you know, it takes some of the burden off parents that, oh my God, I have to feel every second of every day. When kids are given some space to, and some boundaries of what's acceptable and what's not, but some space to build some, some innovation for themselves as well, then they can do that. Yes, they might, you know, they're going to kick up a stink at the beginning. I'm bored, I'm bored. Um, but kids kids actually have a lot of creativity inside of them that this time can unlock for them as well. Gives them the space to be able to do that thinking and, and self-soothing soothing and what can I do? What can I create? Back back to early generations when, when they had sticks and stones and they had whatever it was that they had to be able to create and have that imagination and all that stuff. And you are right. We've got so much that we can give the kids. It's almost too much these days with online tools and da 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 and everything else. So maybe let them be able to just work it out themselves as well. Yeah, absolutely. Now, next question. Now, what's the Corona course and uh, that you've created and what are you hoping to achieve? Fantastic. I've created um, actually two courses. There's so many people that are really, really, really struggling with fear and anxiety and stress around this time. And it's around a lot of those things that we talked about and even more. Um, so I've created a couple of online courses, short lessons, probably about 15 minutes recording, and then some extra stuff if people want to do that. And the two of them are ones around uh, helping people deal, I guess, with the pandemic of panic. So how do you understand what's going on for you in that panic kind of space? And how can we use this time to, you know, turn things around? 
and the other one is more designed specifically for people who are in uh, quarantine over you know specifically over those 14 days to help them deal with the lockdown meltdown so from the initial kind of panic response to then how do I start dealing with okay well you know maybe I'm not sick but how do I then start dealing with the boredom um, and, and you know and managing that in a in a better more resourceful way because as I said Netflix can just become like this uh, calorie calorie full but you know nutritionally empty sort of space and it can lead to you know if people already have that predisposition for sort of depression or low mood that this can really hit people very very hard so both of the courses are all aimed to help people understand their fears so that they can manage them better well, we'll definitely have a link to that um, at the in the introduction paragraph. Thank you for your um, insightfulness today, for your your information, for your beautiful positive energy that you've you've um, sort of given us today, and sort of come right through the screen. If any, thank you. Any other questions? Whereabouts can they find you? They can find me at um, my website is anitavanruyan.com. Um, but I also have um, an Instagram and Facebook pages that are called Confidence Hackers. Um, that's one of the, the brands that I use, Confidence Hackers. And every day there is really useful and practical tips and tools on building confidence, building self-worth, building you really um, from the ground up. I used to be the shyest person in the universe. Um, but even the thought of doing something like this would have freaked me out big time. So I've come from a space of being incredibly shy, incredibly frightened of people and things um, to now being in a space where I'm in this beautiful, fortunate position to be able to help other people who may be struggling. I'm so grateful for your time. So grateful to, that you've shared that part of your story too, that you've transitioned from one to the other and look where you are now as well. So testament to that it is definitely possible. And it's... Um, Most definitely. Yeah. Well, look, we really hope to have an opportunity to chat with you again in the future. We'll have all of those links. Take care, stay safe, and hopefully we'll speak soon. Be well. Take care. Bye.